All right, homesteader family. So we are up here at the ranch. Just got all the piggies fed. They're all in there having fun. <coughs> Not sure where the geese just went. The geese were just right over here. They, oh, there they go. They're right there on their way down to the creek to get some water after eating. So they're nice and happy. All the goats are eating. And the black goats got their names today. So we got the boy right here is Olaf. And the girl in the back with the green one that just looked up is Tove. So they know their names now. I touched them a couple times, told them their names. So they get used to their names. But I want to go over uh, things here at the ranch I didn't cover in the Sunday Monday vlog uh, while I was in Florence uh, for the drawing for the names of the goats. So of course this video you guys won't see for a bit. But this will update you on what's happening, what's going on, and what the plans are. So, this is going to be the big front parking lot here uh, in this whole area. Uh, this fence here, I'm probably going to bring back some and go straight so it's not angled like that. Because I figured I'm going to need a good amount of parking Um once I get everything established and have customers coming up. So I want to make sure I have plenty of room for cars to park on this side, cars to park on that side, or however I get it set up. So that's something I'm going to have to figure out. What I also might do is I might, um, I'm going to get the fence like I talked about in the Sunday Monday vlog. I'm going to get the six foot no climb horse fence. It's a knotted fence which is a lot stronger. I don't have to worry about many uh, climbing the fence. But instead of, <laughs> I'm going to have to tear all my fence down. But instead of putting it right here where this fence is, I'm probably going to come out here and I'm going to have to move the shelter and put the fence right here on the edge of the shelter to give another four feet or so uh, to make the parking lot bigger. Because like I said, what I want to do is I want to have parking on this side and I want to have parking on this side. And the way it is right now, I think it would be too tight. I mean, let me get over here to the other side. And I'll, I'll show you coming in. It just looks a little too tight. So I think if I bump it out another six feet or so, then uh, that would give me what I need for the parking. So you can see I, I got the shelter here and the fence right there. So... If you look at these two tire tracks, that's a vehicle. And you look, you know, not even a whole vehicle would fit there. And then coming out here, not a whole vehicle would fit here. So I've got to figure all that out and see exactly what I want to do. But I think by pushing the fence another six feet that way, and then once I get the equipment to excavate all this down flat, take all this dirt here, fill in down here where it's sloped, make this nice big flat parking lot with uh, crushed rock, I think that would work good. Hey, hey, come back. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Max, Smith. Mouse. See, I don't even have to talk to the goats. The goats listen. Mini Mouse is starting to listen again. And here come these two. There they all go. But anyhow, so since I'm going to rent the auger uh, tomorrow to put in the fruit trees that I need to take back to Home Depot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and blast a hole here and I'm going to blast a hole uh, over here or wherever it needs to be for the front gates because basically no cars are going to come past this parking lot so that way they don't disturb the animals, uh, don't have to worry about animals escaping, things like that. So I'm going to get these holes drilled so I can go ahead and have that ready for when the fence or when I have the money for the gates. And then up here is what I was talking about in the Sunday Monday vlog on what I've dug already. They're just acting crazy. Having fun. But you can see this dirt. It's really good dirt. It's not bad dirt. It just needs to be moisturized. And I mean tons of rocks. Nothing but rocks in here. And you can see down here. You know, it took me about three hours of picking with a pickaxe and then the sludgehammer and this um, 
big like nail is a pick bar and this one you can see not even halfway done and I mean just tons of rocks coming out so with a post hole digger I can go ahead and uh, loosen the uh, ground and the rocks pull it all out with the shovel then build the hooger culture beds uh, for the fruit trees but basically you can see I, I set all these shelters up last year and I did all this fencing that I'm going to have to tear down again because like I said with the six foot fence that will keep I mean deer antelope can jump up to 14 feet straight up and over so six feet isn't going to stop them but six feet is a good deterrence and then what I'm going to do at the top of each the t-post I got to get a eight foot t-post uh, for the six foot fence so it goes down in the ground two feet or whatever I can and then at the top of the t post I'm going to tie cloth flags so when the wind blows or the fence moves a little bit it moves those and will keep the deer farther away but what I decided was I'm going to start here at the front of the driveway and I'm going to start doing my fruit trees and the holes are going to be 12 feet apart which a lot of you are probably like that's too close but the thing is I'm going to keep the trees smaller because the bigger they are the more wind they catch and with the high winds we have I don't want them just tearing the trees right out so keep the trees 12 feet apart I'm going to go up this way uh, do five this way and now I'm going to come in front and I'm going to do in between uh, 12 foot off that one 12 foot off that one diagonal to the center and then I'll start the next row so they're going to be checker pattern and like I said eventually I want to have 250 fruit trees and nut trees uh, here at the ranch so that will a give me uh, fruit and nuts to sell and that will give me uh, fruit and nuts to eat and fruit and nuts to feed to the animals so eventually this whole slope all the way up to where my house is going to be where that table and chairs is will all be fruit trees and nut trees so that's what this whole entire area is going to be i'll be pulling all of these uh shelters out and uh i'll be doing a <coughs> excuse me i'll be doing a small ring fence around each of the trees enough to keep the goats where if they try to climb on the fence their heads can't reach any of the branches so they don't damage the trees and that way the goats and stuff can walk through here. What do you want, Olaf? What do you want? You want some coffee? Nope. Mickey came over. Olaf is like, I'm done jumping on him. But anyhow, as the fruit and the nuts fall on the ground in here, minus what's inside the small fence area, the goats will be able to come in, eat whatever they want when they want. Uh, whenever they're hungry so that's something i'm looking forward to something i'm going to start on uh, like i said i'm going to be bringing 10 trees over uh, two of them survived the other eight died so those eight i'll take back tomorrow uh, to home depot swap them out for new ones and every year my goal is to purchase 10 trees because they run about 50 bucks a tree so that's 500 bucks a year so it's just something I'm going to start working on. So just giving you guys an idea. And like I said, I'll start the uh, six foot fence here. Once I have the post in for the gate, I'm going to run it up to the fence there and then start going up. And if I can do the first roll by myself, then I'll go ahead and continue. If not, I'll have to look at my options at that point. But as of right now, they want 20, 25,000 labor to put up the fence. And if I can do it by myself, I'd rather do that and put that saved up money later into something else. So hope everybody's having a good day. I'll talk to you later.